This is where you can help out. We have three different things. I am well aware of the irony that we have three different, <laughs> different conversation spaces for something that is actually specifically designed to solve for this specific problem. Uh, I'm a fan of it. Uh, there's a uh, oh, there's a demo, and I, I didn't I decided not to show you anything because I didn't want anybody to like have preconceptions about this. Um, but you can go play with it. It's really just about you know user interactions and, and and stuff. But it doesn't actually show what the what the project will do in the long run because we haven't we haven't spent time faking it up yet. Um, now Q and A. That's what I do fear we're going to have lots of <coughs> questions. So what happens if new workflows are developed on local wikis? Can you flexibly account for those and react and add them to flow? Yes. What, what happens with new workflows that happen on wikis? Yeah, and that's actually one of the things that we, you know, it's a, it's a feature bullet point. Um, and when Eric doesn't like it as much as I do, but the workflow description language, it's not like a template system, but it'd be more like we're going to give you a bunch of Lego bricks. And they're like, this is a, a, an interaction. Maybe the interaction is just a one-to-one -one discussion bit, or maybe the interaction is a uh, uh, enumerated comment, like a, um, uh, uh, I say enumerated value comment, but you think like a vote, right? A vote with like a pull down, like keep, delete, uh, you know, strong keep, strong delete, whatever, and then you can like put that in there. These are like little chunks, and when you create a workflow, you'll be able to go like, okay, this thing needs a button, and it says this, and when you hit the button, it subscribes these things to it, and it does this other stuff automatically. Now, building workflow will probably be a, a user write, um, but they're, they're intended to be put on local wikis. The reason being is that it's not possible for us, we just do not have the bandwidth to build uh, all the workflows for all 800 wikis. We just can't do it. So we have to give you the ability to do it. So um, I'll be participating in article co-creation, and we've designed uh, basically a recommended workflow for that uh, for that uh, collaboration space for helping new users. Is there uh, a way we could uh, collaborate with you to actually formalize it so that that's how people uh, participate? Is that the idea also? So uh, the the question is that you have created a, a, an articles for creation workflow already, and or you've been working on one? No, there's a consensus on the workflow which we developed together. Okay, and then what you want to know is whether or not we can help you with that, or whether or not flow will happen. The answer is absolutely yes. Um, that's, in fact, what, what the project is about, is to enable you to do workflows to say, like, this is the steps that an article for creation has to go through to get to the end to then become a deal. Um, you would actually, the discussion would be about, I mean, the workflow would be the discussions about the article as it's being created, and when I say discussions, I just mean like that, or maybe the checklists, maybe maybe that's a function we build, like a checklist, the thing has to hit these following bits, or it has to be reviewed by five people, so or something along with that. So we have actual uh, script for reviewing, mm -hmm. and there's like 20, 20 outcomes, so it's quite complicated because... Sure. That's why we actually had to develop this formally. Yeah, so the ideally, you know, you, you would say like, this is the workflow that we need to have and we can do it with the tools you've given us, but we need another tool and then we go like, okay, well, you know, we can help you out with that. So that's kind of what we do. Yeah. All right, uh, my question is about how are you going to deal with the history, accessing the history of these comments? Like you said, archiving is going to change, but didn't really get into what's going to happen with archiving, and I'm assuming we're not going to have two mile long flow lists on um, pages. Okay, so uh, what's going to happen with archiving, and uh, you wanted to know a bit about comment history. Okay, so the comment history thing is actually built into the, um, the demo, so if you wanted to play with that, you can see how that works. Um, comment histories will be, you know, whether or not we actually provide a thing to like step through the, the discussion as it happened through time. Maybe we don't do that because it's a little weird, but it might be a neat, fun little toy. Uh, when it comes to archiving, archiving is an interesting problem. Um, and it's one I think that each local wiki is going to have to figure out what they want to do for themselves. Uh, there are, uh, currently, let's describe what happens. Currently what happens for archiving is people create a subpage and they roll everything off of it and onto this subpage to die. The discussion is over and it dies. That's one, th one type of archiving. The other type of archiving is what we call hat noting. 
right? You put the collapse top and collapse bottom and say, this discussion is closed, please do not modify it, here's the thing. Maybe, and depending on what kind of system it could be, here's the reason why. Now, we have uh, designed a couple different mechanisms for this. The first one is like where you say, like, the topic is closed. We're going to close the topic. And when you close the topic, you have to provide a summary, and people can't respond to it unless it's been reopened. So that's effectively the hat note problem. The second thing is um, not the archiving the way that uh, bots do it today, but it would be as it just gets older, it rolls off the page. And you could get to it eventually just by paging far enough, all the discussions will happen to be there. But what happens is, is that when the discussion is older than X, when you try to reply to it, it'll tell you, this is, you know, this conversation was last modified 30 days ago, maybe you want to open a new one, maybe you don't. Now there's an anti-pattern there. <laughs> Um, and that has to do with, especially with uh, article talk pages, where the same topic keeps coming up over and over and over again. Um, maybe we do want people to be able to talk in older conversations, just or re be able to read and find them simply so that we don't continually have the same conversations. This is the type of thing that we're not going to know the answer to unless, until we actually get it in the field and people play with it. Um, but it is something worth thinking about. Does, does that answer your question? Uh, a little more. Exactly, how would we be able to cite an old conversation like with this or whatnot? Because the oh. way you're describing it doesn't sound like there would be this to check out. Yeah, there will. I mean, there'll just be, you'll be looking at the, this, it's actually an URL that will point to the state of a conversation at any one point in time. So, so that's kind of like how the inner wiki thing is going to work. There's going to be a single canonical. Um, Web, web address for any one conversation, and you'll be able to like pull that up in at in any point in time in history. Um, I actually got an email from Andrew Garrett this morning. He's already working on that kind of an idea. So, um, yeah. So as the result of going through a workflow, something is actually to happen. For example, image gets deleted, user gets blocked mm -hmm. or unblocked. Uh, is Flow dealing with that, or just with structuring the decision process, getting to that? Um... So we actually have uh, okay. So the answer, is, the question is, um, will Flow handle like administrative activity, like the the actual act of deleting something, or the actual act of blocking or unblocking or something, or putting a template on, or a putting page a template on a page? Um, yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> um, I mean, if you, if the function if the function exists as one of the Lego bits, sure. Um, maybe the unblock request thing says like, okay, when you when somebody clicks the unblock request, it goes out to admins who are interested or subscribes to the unblock requests, and then they say, oh, okay, I'm going to do this. They fill out the reason why, and they click unblock. Sure, why not? Why not just why make it more than 15 actions? You, you only need one one button. Uh, next, yeah. How are we going to handle where flow is enabled? Is going for for example, we have it in some namespaces and we quickly do not this. Flow clearly will work on top pages, it will work on uh, project top pages, but if you go to say the Wikipedia namespace, mm -hmm. half of it is discussion, half of it is very much not discussion. Okay, so the question is how will we handle where or how uh, flow gets enabled on top pages or on pages or itself? Is this whole word? Um, so I'm actually a fan of the way that Liquid Threads is do deals with that, and that is that there's a magic word and you just put it at the top of the page and bam, it's, it's enabled. Um, there is uh, some complication that will come around with that because there's a distinction between what a board is and then the actual discussions themselves. It's more, from a technical standpoint, it's like the board exists and the discussions exist as separate entities and a board is just subscribed to the, this, these specific discussions and so they show up there. It becomes, it, don't think about it too much because you'll go crazy. Um, but uh, that's kind of how we're going to do it, probably. I suppose the question I'm trying to, to go towards is will there be flow and non flow pages, or will there just be pages with flow turned on for that page? So that's a, that's a rollout. So you're asking a question about the rollout, I think, or more than the, anything else. In the, in the final state. In the final state. Page is flow and page <laughs> so um, I think that this is going to be uh, a bit above my pay grade to really answer. The guy sitting next to you actually makes the final decision. Um, but at this point, our plan is to start with a really, like I said, it's a very gradual rollout. The first one is going to be opt-in. And we're going to try to find, we haven't really decided where, but we're actually thinking like a wiki project or something like that to play with because they actually have discussions sometimes and they, they have some special needs. Starting with art with user talk is very ambitious and I would love to do that, but it's also very scary. Um, so we would want to, you know, 
enable people to opt in and say like, I want this to be flow enabled. And then like people would be able to go like, I want my talk page to be flow enabled. And eventually, I think that we would probably get to reach, to reach a point where we go like, all of the namespace, all of this namespace is gonna be flow enabled by default. You know, all new user accounts will have flow enabled as their talk page. Um, all new articles are gonna be flow enabled. Hey, is it that uh, talk pages actually get flow enabled, or do you just remove the user talk page and put in a flow board? I think it's when we do that. I think that's actually probably going to be the technical way that it's implemented. And the question is, is what do the do the talk pages become flow enabled, or does the talk page just go away and become a flow board? I think it's going to have to be that it becomes a flow board, but uh, we don't want to change the namespace name um, because. There's so many things that say go to the issues or talk page. There's already all these links to it, um, signatures that exist. So we want to, uh, we can't, we sort of have to hook in at the, the namespace level from a technical standpoint. I know I'm not going over your head with that, but I think that, I think that's what we're gonna have well, to do. What's interesting is I, I knew Flow as, as just a replacement for discussions, but in this presentation I've learned that it's more than that. It's more about workflow, and mm -hmm. it makes the name make a little bit more sense in my head. <laughs> and so talking about there's places that, that refer to user talk page, it seems like that's all part of what you're solving. It's all part of these workflows. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I understand that there's some work, but I think that you would, you know, I think that you wouldn't necessarily be bound to using the user talk uh, namespace because because of everything pointing to it because that's all part of the system that you're that you're changing. Yeah, um, I, there is uh, some design ideas going around like what is your talk page and it, like is it the same to you as it is to me? Like if I go visit your page, do I see like a feed of like all the things that you're subscribed to? Like in, in, in these kinds of things, we're gonna work into that you know as we go forward. Um, and answer some of those questions a little bit better. You're just chatting, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> so during the uh, incremental deployment phase, uh, are you going to break all kinds of external tools, bots that post messages to users' talk page? Yes. So that goes back to the bot question. The answer is bots will not break. Um, so uh, <laughs> I know, mind blown. Uh, eight bit, okay, bots that screen scrape and use screen scraping to post stuff, we're going to break. But they sh there shouldn't be any of those around anyway. They should all be dead. Um, if you have a bot that's using screen scraping, I don't know what to tell you. So uh, they should already be using the API. The same API calls will exist. Mm. And so when it says like add new section and inject content, uh, what a bot is going to do is it's going to say like flow is going to go like add new section. It's like okay, new topic, and it's going to topic title equals this, and then it's going to say new post, and post content equals the t the injected template. And we're probably going to substitute because again, it comes down to, to handling the parsoid. Like it's gotta go round trip parsoid and come back. Um, and that is pretty much it. It's not gonna, nothing's gonna break. It's, or, there might be one, bots that would leave you some really, really, really funky wiki text. The kind of wiki text that we can't parse easily anyway might have to get their stuff done. And him and then, yeah. Who's on your team? Who's on the team? Well. Uh, obviously I am. <laughs> Mariana here is the uh, uh, pro pro product owner, okay? Um, the development team is unfortunately not here. It's going to be Andrew Garrett, Eric Bernhardson. Benny's here. Benny's here. Benny said two. Um, two uh, developers, is it two, Terry, are you here? Um, two developers that we have let yet to hire, and they're going to be front it's end. It's one. It's one? I yeah, but I'm going to... Have some of Ori's time and uh, uh, S's time from E3. Okay. So. Yeah, and then Mat Matthias. Matthias. Um, so we have like we're very strong on the back end, which is where we really need to be strong for. So um, Andrew actually just wants all the prototype code, so he can be lazy about it. Uh, no, Ori. Yeah, I, I don't want to dominate stuff here, but uh, uh, what, what's going to happen with all the old conversations? Are they going to go and uh, become? Uh, they're going to get old conversations are going to get rolled off into archives, and then that that they will they, just as they currently happen when you archive them, they get left to rot. That's but will we be able to access them with flow? That's the question. You will not be able to access them with flow because. Um, you, okay, so will you be able to access old conversations with Flow? No, you're going to access them the same way that you do now, which is just as wiki text pages. 
Um, now, I want to talk about why that's the case. Because somebody asked me earlier, how come we can't take existing talk pages and those discussions and convert them into flow? Um, that way lies madness. Uh, I have, um, for the demo, I actually wrote a Perl script that would take a simple talk page. Like, my talk page is very simple. Take a simple talk page and generate a flow board out of it. Um, it is something like, it's, it's about 400 lines of regular expressions to even begin to make it work. It's just, it's not possible. Um, especially because there's no way to know that the indentation works when people add out dead templates or they put in too many colons or too few colons or whatever. That alone just blows it to pieces. Signatures are hell. Um, especially when people have like spans and font tags. I mean, who has a font tag anymore? Spell check. Spell check. Yeah. Corey. Just a quick question. Actually, it's more like a comment. I know of some bots, including one that ha happened to have written, that before they create a new topic, need to make sure that there isn't a related topic already on the top page. Right, you would, you would, like, can the bot just search the flow board? Can, can it search the flow board? And, and is it possible to, like, give topical tags to your topic so that it can say, oh, okay, that kind of warning has already been issued? Yep. Can a bot search the talk? Can a bot search a flow board? Absolutely. In fact, it's going to be able to search flow board probably better than it can search page. Can a bot search or search for tags? Yes. Because that's actually one of the things that we're trying to introduce here to conversations is the idea of tagging it. So a tag itself is attached to a topic. The topic says, like, oh, this is a deletion discussion, and it knows what to do. The bot should be able to go through and say, find me the discussions associated on this board that are tagged X. And find it. Yeah, not you, the guy behind you. <laughs> um, will there be ways to programmatically access sort of historical records coming from the blog? I mean, will they be in database on, or will they be in other resources? Um, so the actual, OK, so the question is, is I'm repeating all the questions for them. Um, this question is, will we be able to programmatically access historical pieces like a database dump? Um, the answer is yes. I can't imagine why we wouldn't be able to. Um, it seems, you know, I, I'm not, I can't tell you what the database dump format is going to look like, but uh, I, I can't imagine that that wouldn't be in there. Okay, hold on. I got him and him. And, uh, yeah. This time. Yeah, no, no. Um, the guy in front of the guy. <laughs> Anyways, um, I edit from my very poor connection sometimes, mm -hmm. and I'm assuming a lot of people who use Wikipedia Zero do as well a lot of the time. Okay. Now, this flow product sounds like it's going to be a bit more bandwidth heavy than uh, the current system. Now, is there going to be a way to lighten the load for people in developing countries or on very poor connections and whatnot? Perhaps maybe, I hesitate to say gadget because it's oh, basically a workaround, but something to limit the number of uh, discussions that will load or something like that. So the answer, the question you're asking is, is what do I do when I don't have bandwidth, when I'm on a modem or something? Um, the, 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 the answer is yes, there will be an, a minimal viewpoint. There's going to be a lightweight version. We'd already, in fact, there's already been multiple discussions about this. Mostly what's going to happen with this is you'll be, you, you would just actually say get the, the accessibility specialized version or the non-JavaScript version or something along those lines. Um, there will be varying degrees of functionality that you're going to lose. In fact, you're going to lose a lot of functionality, unfortunately, if you're, if you're turning off JavaScript. I, you know, I don't know how to do that. Um, they they'd just be very, very, very lightweight. Um, and there's, you know, a lot of the stuff like whiz-bang things, like automatically detecting what you've read and, and all this stuff that probably won't be there. But yes, there will be a lightweight version. Uh, yeah? Quick demo? Quick demo. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, okay. right. Or not quick demo. Um, well, does that, do you guys want to see it? I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah that's why we're here. <laughs> okay. Oops. Let me find a uh, browser. <clears throat> Let's go to Unicorn. Hold on just a second. OK. 
Okay. So the demo, um, if you guys want to go there, can you see this? Unicorn.wmflabs.org slash flow. Um, that's the, uh, the the official version. It's going to ask you to give you give it a username. You put in that because um, otherwise you're going to be Jorm, and I don't think you want to be me because I barely want to be me. Uh, then it is going to show a load up. Um, here you go. Uh, there's some whiz bang stuff. There's a lot of stuff that's going to change in behavior. You'll notice like all oh, the click here to start a new discussion stays there. Um, there's a lot of fake up as to what it goes down. You know, you would reply to somebody in line. You reply to Oliver. Say reply. It posts and then drops into place. Uh, you can see, like, a lot of it is it's fairly fully functional. It, it, it'll show you histories. It'll show you uh, all sorts and kinds of functionality. We could say, you know, delete the topic or look at its history or edit the title. Um, this is again, though, no, this is not what the final product is. This is just actually to like help people understand what it's going to do or think about it. It's, it's designed to like kick you out of the box. Um, we're going to definitely be doing multiple passes and experiments with things. So, uh, okay, now that we've got the demo out there. Who's got a question about that? I guess. That's really cool. How, how is it going to be handling, like, you know, we have some really massive conversations with like a thousand people talking at the same time? Oh, I actually, uh, in an earlier version of the demo, how, the question is how does it handle like lots, like huge conversations. In an earlier version of the demo, uh, I had a JavaScript function that would actually generate discussions of thousands of people. Um, <laughs> And it was it was fun. I, I disabled it though because it, it it breaks your computer when you try to do that. It's like this huge amount of JavaScript running. Um, it actually handles it pretty well um, when you find like really long conversations. Um, in fact, like you could actually go over here and on the side side over here, there's like examples. And if you want to see like say the example of like what Jimmy Wales's board looks like, um, then you can go there and he has these crazy huge discussions going on all the time. Uh, and that gives you an idea a little bit about what they are uh, or how they'll behave. Uh, next. Yeah. How much user styling can we put on the floor? Because I can, I can look at that now and I can see people are going to say, my god, too much white space. I don't like it. Yeah. Um, I don't see why you, can, you know, it's just going to be the same edit your vector.css or your local CSS or something and you can do that. Compact flow gadget. Compact flow gadget, something along those lines. Um, we might actually have like a different view, viewpoint on it. There's, there's actually, this, that kind of always makes me sad inside um, because there's like known science about usability in terms of like readability. Like I know everybody goes like, I want to fill my entire screen so that I have this entire thing on one line. Well, I mean, that actually is really hard to read and, and a lot of people don't know how hard it is to read or even think about that. So, so we actually, the default will actually be best for reading and, and making your eyes not strain and so forth. But yeah, I mean, why not allow you to do that? Yeah. So uh, if we are, if during the discussion, we uh, infer, uh, we refer to some of the prior version of uh, article in Wikipedia. Yeah. And then on the specific uh, spots, mm -hmm. how are you going to do that in, 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 uh, in the floor? Or you just if you're talking about an article, it's just the same way you would do it otherwise. You just create the link to the diff. Or you create the link to the hashtag link or something. Link to the diff. Link to the diff, link okay. to a hashtag or something like this. So it's the exact same it's the way we worked before. Yeah, Amir. Um, so, maybe some of the topic. Voting. So, yeah. on, on the English Wikipedia, voting is a big no-no, and in many other languages. I call it bang voting on the English Wikipedia. Bang it's voting. not a vote. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but like, it's not never, never counting the votes. Right. Um, on some languages, it is used. Sure. Uh, will you handle it in some way? Will you have well, that's up to the local wiki, way? as far as I'm concerned. That's if the local wiki says that we want to count votes, then let's get count votes. And if they don't want to auto count votes, then they won't auto count votes. Like, and this, so this means that there will be some kind of support for it in the that would be the, the workflow language would actually, or the workflow descriptor would actually say like, okay, this is a bang vote, and it, I want tally. Or this is a bang vote without tally. Something like that. It would just be another tool. 
Brian Vibber. Uh, are you guys already working on a um, more compact visual interface for for mobile? Devices? Yeah, I knew, I knew you were going to go with the mobile side. Um, this has actually been, I've been thinking about mobile from day one as far as like how the design goes. You know, you'll notice like, okay, well, we've got indentation here um, in half of these things. The indentation is not very deep, but, you know, when we go to mobile, you know, we kill the indentation, say, or a lot of these other things become not visible until tapped on or something along those lines. I mean, and there's other stuff, too, that has to change. Like, oh, this is three days ago until you hover over it, and then it shows you exactly the date. Um, that one that's not mobile friendly, but these types of things we'll we'll deal with as we get there. In fact, Viv is probably the one that's going to have to do it. <laughs> do my job for me. Uh, anybody else? Otherwise, I guess we can go. Oh, Risker, here we go. This is going to be fun. Okay, so this is really cool, and I have looked at it. And I played with it a bit, and it keeps coming back to my mind that it's really cool that you can do this Well, there's, okay, so, okay, so why are we, um, so this comes back to, the question comes back to um, excess, uh, ease of use in low bandwidth countries or with like low power computers, why are we not making the lightweight version the default and so forth and so on? Um, well, the, uh, the simple truth of the matter is, first, I, you know, I actually want to address your comment about the visual editor being very slow. Um, which we know it's, it's speed is on, on, on um, large pages is, is part of the parsing thing. But there's actually, we actually have a technical debt thing that we kind of need to pay down, which is that there's a lot of extra cruft in terms of CSS and JavaScript that's getting loaded, and we can probably stand to reduce a lot of that and optimize that. That's just a separate problem, um, and Flow will unfortunately be subject to that until we optimize. But I just want to make sure that we understand that that is a known, known quantity. Um, why do we not want to do that? Well, because it's like there are certain things that are just nice to do. It's nice to be halfway down the page and then decide I'm going to search for the thing. I, I, I couldn't find what it was, so why can't I just search for it right here? Um, it's nice to be typing in if I wanted to reply to uh, Brian and I wanted to ping, him, ping you into the conversation, I want to just be able to type at Risker and have it just magically know to include a link to you and ping you with an echo notification. There's a bunch of little bits and pieces of really useful, fun, joyous kinds of things that we want to be able to do. Uh, for example, um, I wanted to know which ones I've read without me telling it which ones I've read. I, 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 and and that, that's something that we can only do in JavaScript. And so this is the, the experience that we want to give people. The primary other use case for that, and this comes back to the visual editor again, is we're not thinking about today, we're thinking about like three or four years from now, when again, we want the same experience to be the discussion experience as the editing experience. And that means that we have to you know, make them as match as close as possible. Eric Muller, can you possibly have a question about that? <laughs> can I just add to that a little bit? So, I think one of the things about Visual Editor that's um, a little bit different from the flow uh, use case is that in the case of Visual Editor, you are actually typically needing to interact with the whole document, and the whole document um, can be very large. Yes, we want to support the equivalent of section editing in Visual Editor, but even if you're in a section, you may want to then um, go over to the rest of the document and start interacting with this. There are ways that we can optimize large document interactions, but it's still a very different use case from having a single comment on the discussion page. One of the nice things about structured conversation is that it actually enables you to chunk uh, a conversation in useful ways that are optimized to give you a better page rendering experience, which you cannot do with a uh, conventional big old blob of text. That you yeah, actually, that's, that's an, I'm glad you brought that up because it actually brings back this thing. It actually might be faster to load a flow board in a low bandwidth country than a talk page. 
or on a mobile phone. Or on a mobile phone. I mean, consider the use case of Facebook. A lot of us use Facebook on our mobile phones, and one of the reasons that works very well is that you get little chunks of conversation at a time that you can interact with. And similarly, you can actually imagine like a very nice flow implementation on mobile that gives you like a feed of all the top pages that you've interacted with recently, or some of the group conversations that you've been part of. And you can load them one at a time, and it doesn't load the whole thing immediately. That's okay because you can start interacting with it. So actually, flow in in the in the real world, um, the demo is actually going to be a lot slower than than the real world is going to be. And that's just because of the way it, it, it works. But the real world is going to load what we call the Chrome, like the the page, these bits, and then first, and that'll be happening real fast. And then each one of these conversations will be coming in on separate requests. They're going to come in pop 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 pop. So your perceived performance will actually be significantly faster. Oh, um, one other thing that makes Flow inherently an easier problem is that it's an accumulative process of adding comments to an existing database as opposed to having to be able to edit everything that's ever been written in the history of Wikipedia. So in that sense, it is easier for us in the case of Flow to start using the new parser from the very beginning and to avoid a lot of the round tripping complexity that you see with something like Future Editor and to make the user experience optimized for performance from the very start, whereas the editor user experience is optimized right now for integrity of the content that you're right. editing. So uh, then again, there's, there's even another thing as to why it'll be faster. None of this goes through a parser on the way out. It only goes through the parser on the way in. So right now, talk pages, especially if you're logged in, they bypass the cache, which means that the page gets reparsed every time, and it's a very slow process. Liquid Threads is, is brutally slow because each one of the pages, each one of the comments is its own page. And if you're logged in, each one of those comments has to go through the parser again. And so when you have, a, especially with, with a really long conversation, that, that could be like 12, even if it's just 12 comments, all 12 of those have to go through the parser, and that's super slow, and then get assembled. But Flow, actually, they're going to be pulled right from the cache in HTML already and just reassembled. Because we don't need to like constantly be round tripping it because we know that each individual comment is going to be is going to be static, as opposed to dynamic. Except when people are allowed to have comments. Yes, and, but that is going to be a rare activity because why? Why, why would you need to edit? Why why would four thousand people need to edit one comment? Oh dear, you really haven't been paying attention to top pages, have you? Uh, huge amounts of vandalism, nastiness, uh, personal attacks. But comment. So why? Um, so if, if, if okay. So I leave a comment that's full of vandalism and personal attacks. Mm -hmm. Why is that comment that's not deleted? Well, deletion is in memory. No, that's actually, right? deleting comments from here is a local. Is a local. Anybody can do it. Replacing them even is, is actually local. Um, it's editing them. It's not. Right? And that's just in this in this interface. Again, all those things are like going to be locally, you know, defined. The, the, it's the con it's the convolution between content moderation and editing. They're not the same thing. So if, if somebody's put up a bunch of personal attacks, it's a delete done. That's not editing the comment, that's deleting it. Um, although it's Wikipedia, so it's more like hiding it. Uh, Stephen. I think if anybody's interested, and it sounds like some people are, we should maybe just have an informal meetup session about performance. Because more than any other individual feature, like flow, visual editor, whatever, it's really a cross-team problem. And it's a data problem in terms of like knowing what our overall performance is, what what the impact is every time, we, single time we deploy every week, that kind of thing. And it's really important. Um, and I don't think we should just cram it into a flow discussion. Uh, Matt is next. Yeah, I wanted to add a couple of things. Uh, we do have some data that on performance uh, or implement something called navigation timing, which kind of uh, keeps track of how long various parts of the page take. Uh, I also wanted to note that uh, different features don't necessarily need to load all at once. So for example, if you right. load when you're doing an article, uh, so that means just browsing Wikipedia, there won't be a slowdown. And we need to be smarter for sort of loading certain things only when they're, when they're needed. Uh, also, have, have you thought about uh, on mobile, will those, those requests for the constant paging, I just click on the page, have a, have a latency issue on mobile? That, I think, is going to be a Brian Dibber problem. Uh, yeah. uh, or a Thomas uh, King latency problem. is not just a mobile issue, but it is particularly bad on mobile. Uh, but also because most of our servers are centralized currently in the United States, uh, anything that's very interactive can have a longer latency for other parts of the world, such as 
Asia, Australia, etc. Yeah, maybe we should. Um, so it's something that we very much have to look at to make sure that um, anything that's interactive goes quickly uh, and that it uh, is very clear about, okay, I'm in the process of saving or I'm in the process of loading, so you don't sit there going, nothing's happening and give up. Uh, but yeah, that's very much something we're going to have to look at. Maybe we should convince Eric to like open a caching server in Singapore or something. Solve our mobile problems out here. Um, I think we've gone like way over. <laughs> yes. Um, and we're supposed to do a round table. I, I don't know how you want to. Um, yeah, so raise your hands if you edit a Wikipedia other than English Wikipedia. Right. Okay, excellent. All right. Um, you wanna... I'm going to take it away then. Okay. Here you go. You know where to find this guy. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty recognizable. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Um, so some of you uh, know Brandon. Um, probably not all of you know me. I'm Mariana. Um, I will be, as Brandon said, the product manager for the Flow project. Um, and in, if you were around yesterday uh, at the product manager uh, talk, you might actually know what the product manager does. Um, basically, the gist is turning an idea like Flow into a real piece of software that works um, on all the projects that we have. Uh, no big deal. So, oh, actually, Brendan, can I um, borrow that? Oh, the connector's already on. Thanks. Sweet. I'm just going to plug myself in right here. Okay, so while I'm setting up, um, German Wikipedians, raise your hands. German Wikipedians. Okay. <laughs> French Wikipedians. No one. <laughs> Portuguese? No? Who else do we have here? Chinese. Whoa. <laughs> nice. Excellent. Okay. So. What's the sister projects? Oh, yeah. Sister projects in there. What are those? Me yeah. wiki. Yeah. Me wiki. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Um, so. What I wanted to do, and some of this will be a little bit redundant, um, but I just wanted to really quickly uh, touch on the main points of why we're doing flow and why I'm asking you what wikis you edited. Um, why is discussion important? It basically does all of these things. Go oh, away. Um, all of these things here uh, are how Wikipedia functions. Um, and they're all very different. So um, we know that things like consensus building discussions are way, way different from you know just kind of one-to-one -one collaboration between editors. Um, it's very different from conflict resolution. Um, I think, do we have any arbiters, arbitrators? in the house, no? Like two ago. Uh, that's a shame. Um, so anyway, but we know that these are really, really different kinds of discussions. Um, and they require very different features and tools, um, which we have built out of basically wiki text and wiki markup and templates um, to solve all of those needs. Um, taking you back to the past, the glorious past, um, this is what talk pages looked like in 2005. Um, you can see that this is the talk page for um, the verifiability policy, uh, and it has things in it like random discussions about the philosophical concept of verifiability. It has um, RFCs and, and arbitration requests that are not related to ver verifiability at all. Um, back in 2005, the community was really small, and there were like five Wikipedians. Um, I'm exaggerating, there was more than that. Um, but, but the community was really small, and everybody watched these talk pages. And if you wanted to get people's attention, you could basically post in any talk page um, about anything. So everything was all a garbled soup of, of stuff. Um, now, when you look at talk pages on English Wikipedia, what you see is a bunch of you know, what this talk page is not. It's not a forum for general discussion. You know, don't post your random thoughts and musings here. Um, the point is that discussion spaces have become super specialized. And you all in this room know 
what happens on those discussion spaces. Um, but people walking into the community today, or even you know a few years ago, um, don't actually know what happens in those discussion spaces. This is everything that happens on English Wikipedia, as far as discussion goes. Here it is, right here. Um, please tell me if I'm missing anything, but take a minute to like, just let this sink in, how complicated and crazy this all is. Um, you know, so when you think about a talk page generally, you think, oh yeah, user talk, you know, I, I talk to other editors about stuff. Um, but actually, it's way more complex than that, obviously. Um, so as Brandon said, um, you know, flow is not going to be something that just gets turned on overnight on all talk pages, because first of all, not all discussions happen on talk pages. Um, and second of all, all of these things are just ra radically, wildly different. Yes, Oren. You can the quiz, but article situation is all done on the talk page as well. Yes, that's right. And actually, as you were talking, I realized I'd forgotten about AFC here. So that happens on Wikipedia talk? Yes. Yeah, right. Um, so how do these things actually look on English Wikipedia? Um, I want to use English because it's the project that I know best, the one that I edit on, um, and because I think institutionally in the foundation, we collectively know English Wikipedia better than any other wiki. Um, and the reason that I'm really happy that there are a bunch of people from other wikis here is that you're going to have to tell me how all this looks and behaves on your wiki. Um, that is really, really important. We need to know this. Um, so as, you're, as we're going through, just think about how, how you do this kind of stuff on the wiki that you are uh, most familiar with. So user talk. Um, this is the most obvious, simple, basic thing, right? Um, two editors talking to each other on a user talk page either their own or two user talk pages, back, you know, back and forth. Um, one element that's really interesting here um, is the kind of visual language that English Wikipedians have invented to signify progress in tasks, right? So we have the done, the check mark done, um, the in progress template. Um, we use these to kind of signify, you know, we're working on something or we're done with something. But other than that, really, it's not that complicated. It's pretty much just back and forth, kind of unstructured discussion, right? Um, this is kind of what it looks like abstracted. We also have notices and warnings on English Wikipedia. Um, block notices, deletion notices, um, user warnings. We also have porn stars in Wikilove, um, the positive side of that, right? And these things are not, not discussions, really. Um, they, they kind of have an action um, that may or may not require a reaction, um, but they're not, they're not really discussions. They're more like notifications. Um, on article and other talk, um, so like category talk, template talk, we also have one-to-one -one collaboration, right? Same thing, two editors talking to one another about something. Um, and it has that same basic shape, right? There may be some element of done or in progress, but other than that, not too complicated. And then we get into the fun stuff. So um, deletions happen on article talk pages, right? Um, so speedy and proposed deletion, um, but also things like featured content nominations, or well, good article nomination in particular. Um, these behave really differently from kind of one-to-one -one collaboration, right? Because unlike unstructured conversations between two editors, there has to be a finished, there has to be a resolution, there has to be some kind of like, and then we're done, and this is what we've decided. Um, that is a pretty important distinction. Um, and when you're thinking about things like flow, um, obviously, as Brandon mentioned, there are ways we can automate this um, that don't have to involve templates or hat notices, um, ways we can easily make it so that you can close a discussion and move on with your life without having to know all the complicated, elaborate markup, right? Uh, Wikipedia namespace. So again, one-to-one -one collaboration, right? Tons of that happens on Wikipedia namespace, and I think AFC also fits into this. Um, you know, we have people talking to each other and, and working together to improve content, to discuss behavior, all kinds of stuff, right? Um, and just generally chatting with each other um, on community spaces. Um, we also have things like requests uh, and notice boards, um, as well as main page nominations. So these things um, behave kind of like uh, deletion discussions in that they're also discussions between editors that require a close, they require a finish. Um, and finally, we have this really complicated stuff. Um, so articles for deletion requests for adminship. Basically, um, as Oren mentioned, or uh, I think who else mentioned? No, Amir, Amir. Um, 
the concept of a vote, uh, which may or may not actually be a real vote, but kind of functionally behaves like one. And when you look at how these things actually look on the wiki, uh, you'll see that there are these sort of like keep, delete, support, oppose, bolded statements at the beginning of each of those comments. Um, and then obviously they're there for a reason. Um, they're there because a closing admin needs to scan this conversation quickly and be able to sort of gather the pulse of the discussion um, and, and know when it's a you know snow keep or a snow delete, when it's so obvious that it's, it doesn't even require any kind of in-depth analysis, right? So whether or not it's a vote, it still has a, has a purpose here. Um, and the last thing, um, so the really, really complicated discussion system that English Wikipedia has developed is requests for comments and arbitration. These things are hugely complicated and big, right? Um, but really what they break down into is this. <laughs> um, there's some options. Uh, and you get to sign your name next to them. And, you know, propose other options if you don't like the ones that are proposed. Um, so what I'm trying to do here is basically get at the fact that all these things are really complicated and big and hairy, but when you look at them, this is all it breaks down into, right? This is it. So it's discussions that need to be resolved, right? Um, discussions that don't need to be resolved. There's sort of like system messages and warnings and notifications. Um, and there's social messaging, right? Um, on article talk, discussions that need to be resolved, discussions that don't. And on Wikipedia namespace, kind of poll vote type of stuff. Um, discussions that need to be resolved, discussions that don't. Right? Obviously, like some themes are emerging here. So what I need to know from you guys um, is how does this work on your Wikipedias? Um, how do these things actually work? Do they work like this? Are they, are they sort of basically at heart um, either discussions that need to be resolved or don't? Um, are they sort of the option one, option two, um, the yes, no, support, oppose? Um, how do these things actually behave? Um, so yeah, like does anybody have any kind of reactions to that or, 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 in? yeah? Like a final resolution of what we're discussing, but very important. Uh, all of, almost all of these discussions are policy laden, so they're, they're referring to very specific policies. And if you don't actually do that, often either your vote doesn't count, or you're, you're, you're not considered as a serious uh, uh, participant in the discussion. Um, and this is a very important part of socialization. I, I guess what I'm trying to say is uh, this should be. Uh, First class object in these, in these uh, considerations, and some of the references are explicit and some of them are implicit. So sometimes you get WP and Paul, sometimes you get the name, and sometimes you get the full English name. Right. I, I mean, on, on like requests for comment, on maybe RFA, RFC, uh, some, of the, some, some of the more meta talk, yes, for sure, all policy related. But but on user talk, probably not. Actually, probably not a whole lot of policy gets thrown around on user talk. Maybe a little bit. So on, on comments, we have uh, a request for bot flags um, page, and that's that's a classic workflow thing uh, where the, the discussion changes in status. Um, so for example, the user proposes a bot, a question is asked, uh, it's clarified, a test run is proposed, and uh, the status changes from waiting for operator to waiting for the test run, or waiting for community input, and so on. Um, are you going to have these status changes? Yeah, that's, that's actually a really good idea, um, and a, a really good point, um, rather. is there Are there other kinds of discussions that happen with status kind of... There are discussions. Go ahead, you guys can talk. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's well, a round table. I'm going to put this microphone down. It makes me feel weird. <laughs> there's discussions. There are discussions that actually have statuses, but they don't really call them that or they're not called out. So, for example, even a, an, a, a deletion request has a status, but like after the seven days have passed or however long, you know, the status is now waiting for admin, even though we don't <laughs> specifically call it out that way. They're, they're, just, they're just ghost status. In this case, it's formalized. And they actually specifically call that a status. But like request for articles for creation, walk through things, they all have statuses as well. The status is now waiting for review or status is ready for publication or something along those lines. And Flow will be able to actually define statuses. 
Another think, example uh, on Wikidata, there's a, a few kind of tests that can be. Uh, one of the most common proposals is uh, a property proposal. So you say, okay, we need this new uh, link property. So we're going to propose link. And then, first of all, it needs to be discussed, obviously. And there's a time based thing, as in other projects, we have to wait for that time to pass. Uh, right. And then another thing that could make it more complicated, though, is uh, it has to go into pending if the data type isn't implemented yet. So, for example, even no numbers with units are not implemented yet. So, after the discussion, if people say, yes, we want link, but it's not available yet, it would go into a pending status. So, that's just sure. another, another example. Uh, but I did want, want to note that obviously, sometimes it is a workflow like that. But you also have like things like perennial proposals where people just keep talking about the same thing, but no one, no one's quite ready to either reject it or accept it. So you, we do need to understand that like there's always going to be a role for kind of less structured talk like that. Right. Yeah. So. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Huh. Chris, you want? Uh, sure. Okay. Um, I. I forgot about this when we were talking about it, but I <coughs> remember we also have those uh, requests for check users and whatnot, which yeah. do have explicit statuses, which we might have to work in because right now they're using templates, and I recall Brendan has discussed how templates are going to be phased out more or less. Can I handle this one? Yeah. Um, so I actually, so so the check user thing that, that brings up another 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 point, and this was actually I had a conversation with. Um, arbitration committee member uh, about this and it has to do with like we will be able to do certain things like restrict the ability for people to comment on things um, we could blacklist or whitelist I see some eyes getting wide great <laughs> <laughs> no no I see one of my regrets this is this is this is a this is and, and I, I know it almost sounds anti Wikipedian to say like you can't edit it but like on our ARPCOM case may be that, and part of the reason that they're structured the way they are, I don't know if you guys know how ARMCOM cases or dark or discussions are structured, they're really crazy. Everybody has their own section. You can't respond to anything. Well, part of the reason is so that you can just go like, this guy's an idiot and not pay attention to anything he says. Um, what they want to be able to do is to be able to say like, only the following people can comment on this discussion because there's the, there's the only people involved in the case. This kind of a thing falls back to your check user bit. There's also other stuff like, well, could we make the conversation private? Yeah. Right? There are private conversations. There are private conversations that happen all the time. They just don't happen on the wiki. So ARBCOM has a mailing list that you can't access. But one of the things is, what if they actually had a flow board that was private, and then they could deliberate and then say, like, okay, we're going to declassify this discussion and make it public. <laughs> um, like that was a request. Yeah. We 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 could do that. We also have other wikis that they're using as a workaround. Is a workaround for the specific exact same thing. Yeah. So, so as a follow up to the whole status change stuff, I missed the first two minutes of it for. But this is obviously going to be integrated with notifications. Oh yes. Yeah. We didn't even so, talk about Echo involved in this, but to me that seems like yeah. a no brainer. Go ahead. Uh, just a follow up question for Brendan's comment. That's actually very interesting, and I'm sure a couple of people probably got the same idea I did. Uh, does this mean, for example, if there's an interaction game between two users, we can make sure they don't edit each other? Oh yeah, yes. absolutely. <laughs> yes. We can totally, we can, we can totally enforce interaction games. Suddenly, that way. all the drama yeah. is resolved on all the wikis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. No. I think it's just going to go someplace else. But, but yeah, we could do. We can definitely enforce it to a degree. But we can also do topic bans. You know, maybe you're not allowed to edit. Articles on Scientology, you know, so they just basically blacklist uh, let's, you. Let's keep it to talk for now. Let's not, keep, let's not get into the article stuff. But um, you had a comment, I think. Yeah, well, one of my new requests will be for the current user talk patches, the, the option to unfriend a specific user. Unfriend? <laughs> yeah, that, that's another word for saying. No. Oh, you mean you want to you want to block? GTA. Yeah, block or mute, specifically perhaps. for this. I'm going to my user talk page, and I see someone making personal attacks. I don't want Jimmy leaving a message on my talk page again ever. Click. Click. <laughs> that's that's what you're looking for. That could exacerbate some things. For example, especially with new users, someone keeps saying, "Why, why do you keep posting about this stupid, this stupid company that is notable?" <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, I I, I I understand what you're asking for. I actually would, would probably put that down. At, unfortunately, I'd, I'd probably put it low priority. Um, I, I would put. 
high priority. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I, I, I'm just saying, no, um, make, 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 make a case for it. Actually, I, if, I, if you can mute someone on your use talk page, you don't have to go anywhere to say, I'm going to. Oh, you don't have to go to A&I and like and report and them. Yeah. That's what you're saying. Uh, Java's good for that. Yeah, to I think though that for you, yes, yeah. generally works on the assumption oh, that right. there's a shared set of rules yeah. that is enforced. And Show if you violate them, then if it's really an abusive method that we're leaving to you, you should it's actually go to A&I. You should go to A&I. That's, that's, that's kind of the thing. Like, it's not like an interaction that can be handed down by Article. You want to slightly give them this. Yeah, but it's not part of that. It's not asked to extend the application to the Theoretically, we would turn it into a software thing. I would prefer to keep things on the honor system as much as possible. Just that's the way I think that we should be, but um, you know, if, if it comes out, maybe maybe we do. I don't know. Just yeah, the like system, like someone, I'm um, the president, at the same time that discussed on this page because often I get informed about a discussion of the data or so. So uh, this comes back to like subscriptions are you? and tagging, right? So, again, we haven't figured out, like, we haven't fleshed this out because we want to learn how people want to use this. But, like, uh, right now, you can you can subscribe to, you, you watch someone's user page, and then you're, you're seeing their discussions. Thanks, somebody's trolling me now. Um, the, uh, uh, subscribing to a user would then be a similar effect. But like you could also maybe subscribe to a topic or subscribe to a tag. So if a discussion happens on someone else's talk page oh, yeah. that's tagged the same, it would in theory show up in your feed. Sorry. 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 about to hear from other people like how does deletion happen on like say German Wikipedia what what is the process there is it also like a multi-page thing yeah on the deletion Wikipedia it is everything that I've seen is essentially a prop so oh. for example it's a perma stub mm -hmm. it gets brought in two weeks one week gone I haven't seen any DFD deletion on the English Right. I don't even think MediaWiki has a process. <laughs> MediaWiki doesn't have a process. Well, the process is one of us go, mm, delete. Right. So the point is, I guess, that there's no sort of one way to do deletion. We would need to have kind of simple things for wikis that need them and more complicated things for, for wikis that need them. Um, but I think that the fact that there are three different kinds of deletion on English Wikipedia and that they all are in different namespaces and they all involve completely different processes is really broken and weird. Um, so one of the things that Flow might actually sort of help solve is this strange, because they developed organically you know, over time and they were sort of, nobody was looking to see how the other people were doing it. It was sort of like an organic process um, that may need, may need reevaluation actually. So yeah, I don't know. So, was it that you're really building Flow for? Because I'm, I'm, I'm a new editor, I'm under five hundred edits for the roughly. Yeah. And uh, I don't understand a lot of these concepts even. Yeah. And so I'm just, I'm wondering, like, the committee that is part of the community that always talks to us, uh, is it that they want a better discussion system? Is, is this, because it sounds like an optimization for them, and a lot of the things that new users experience, such as, like, I know you said collaboration and community building, but that's maybe even a step away from 
what what are you user needs, which is like basic help um, or introduction. Um, like how so so I guess what I'm really trying to understand is that in the way that you guys that we're going to stage this project, right? Who is it that you are you optimizing for the people who already talk despite whatever usability issues are there? <laughs> Or are you trying to solve this problem because we want new people to participate in the community? So I think for me, um, I'm, I'm an editor, but I'm not a super power user, I would say. Um, I do some content work, um, but not a ton. And I think there are a lot of people out there like me who have made it to you know a couple thousand edits, um, which is like nothing on English Wikipedia, right? Uh, and, and they kind of get stuck after a while because of these processes that are so broken and weird. Um, because you have to know how to do like 10 different things with templates in order to just to like get an article to good article It's it's really bad. Um, I think that's one subset of people that I definitely want to solve for myself obviously <laughs> um, Included, but I think you're right that, um, that there's other people out there who haven't even gotten close to any of this complexity Who all they really need is to understand that there are humans out there um, that they can communicate with which is actually a problem. Um, and and I think sort of thinking of it in separate chunks, so thinking of how we're going to solve the consensus building problem, which is a power user problem, but also thinking of how we're going to solve the one-to-one -one collaboration problem, which is an everybody problem. Like, everybody does one-to-one -one collaboration on Wikipedia. It doesn't matter how many edits you have. Um, those, are, those are separate kinds of things that we need to solve for completely differently and sort of targeting different personas, right? I, I would note a couple of things. Uh, first, I, I think it's a mistake to think just because a power user knows how to do something then the, the like, difficulty of the process can't like slow down or yeah, discourage them. Sure. Like a, a night or two ago, I was trying to like merge a template into another template. So first I did it wrong, then, then I, I found the right documentation, then I, I post merging, help merging, and Wikipedia merging, not a joke. Uh, yeah. So the point is that... <laughs> Never <laughs> <point>. Yeah. <laughs> the point is that it can still be discouraging even if you actually know how to do it. Also, I think in a lot of cases, like, these processes do impact new users. For example, deletion, that obviously has a huge impact on new users, and th this can make things a lot easier. Another one would be uh, the Help Me template, which basically right now is it's kind of, it, it's, it's designed to be very easy for new users, but basically what it boils down to is you post a template on the page, then hopefully someone comes helps you. So uh, there is um, some design work someplace for actually an automated, and a lot of wikis hate this and other ones don't, the sort of an automated help thing, like you create your account, and the first thing that happens is you get a flow posting. It's like, here's some help. Like, here are three things that you may want to read, and then there's a little button on it that says, click this if you need help. And then when you click it, it tags your thing as I need help or something, and then the people who monitor that will be able to come and actually say, hi, let me help you. Um, to get to Viva's question or, or the thing about like, um, new users versus old users. Uh, I am a firm believer that if we solve it for the right way, we solve it for everybody. Um, the problem is is that we can't start with new users. We have to start with the experienced users because the real problems are, as she, she pointed out, the problems are when a new user gets their article deleted. They're, it's not asking for help as much as it is like trying to navigate the awful process. And so if we can make that easier or friendlier, um, that's going to help them in the long run greater. Yeah, okay, another one would be the unblock workflow. Yeah, the unblock workflow, something like that. I totally agree with designing the best that will work for the most people. Mm -hmm. But do you have a way that you could tell if it's a brand new person, like the first time they've ever hit the top page, and then like give them just a couple instructions? Yeah, that's like the first eight times. That's or something? getting started. Where yeah, Stephen Paul. Definitely. And, yeah, these two. That's their thing. But I mean, if it's on this though, like yeah. so if you're making. Oh, yeah. There's then, general techniques we can do. For yeah. If it's like the first 12 times, then you get the thing. Yeah, I know. Uh, help me out. I don't know. Here's how to respond. Here's yeah. how to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Ideally, though, you shouldn't need help to do it. I mean, well, if, but if you, I, like, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but. I mean, uh, the idea is the workflow will basically like help you do it with, without needing any instructions. For example, yeah. articles for deletion. You say you want to keep it, you just write your message, here's why it should be kept, click key, so. Yeah. yeah, my point in distilling a lot of this stuff was that it's not actually that different from what happens on a lot of other sites. Like, you know, you're, you're re replying to people, you're maybe, you know, watching people's discussions kind of, you know, 
liking them or not liking them, whatever. Um, there's a lot of kind of general lessons from modern software that we Is that true? I mean, are there good examples that you can think of where you have like large scale resolution? I'm guessing like we can pull them like examples like Stack Overflow. Yeah, and, yeah. a lot of the Stack Overflow exchange sites. Um, there's Quora, but there's also you know like the basics of Facebook are uh, are are the same as the basics of Wikipedia. You're leaving you're leaving barn stars and kittens for all your friends, um, and you're you know having heated arguments with people who aren't your friends. But I'm talking more about like the consensus model or the right. voting based decision making. Right. And even in like Stack Overflow or Quora, it's more based on like prioritization of multiple possible answers to the same question. Poll, polling software in various, uh, there's polling software in several <laughs> different forums, but uh, as, as modern discussions have, have moved forward, we see less and less instances of PHP, BB, or things along those lines, which are actually very heavy on, on things like polls. Um, I've always found them to be a mess whenever I use them, but that was just because I think the software itself sucked. Um, has anybody used that? Like, done a PHP BB poll? You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, it's awful. But uh, the, uh, hopefully we don't, you know, we can figure out a way to do it better. I actually do like the way that, you know, most Wikipedias handle their, their vote, bang vote system in terms of those lines. I don't like the way that certain Types of discussions do that, but, but for the most part, it's very simple. It's like, I'm just going to leave my comment and I'm going to do this. I, I would argue that to a certain extent, we are breaking new ground in the sense that if, yeah. um, the most political movements and political groups struggle with some of the same challenges. And if you look at like modern online political parties and the software they, they use, like the pirate party software, it kind of makes you want to shoot yourself in the head uh, if you want to interact with it because it sucks so badly. And Wikipedia actually has optimized its processes over the last 12 years for the kinds of decision making that have to happen in Wikipedia specifically. And I haven't really seen good examples of that kind of decision making being implemented well. So I, I do think that there's an element around like the consensus formation and the decision making process of whether it should be deleted and the implication of yes, I'm now making that call based on the arguments found in this debate that is unique and needs to be solved by us. Yeah, like there's not. I agree. There's not that many sites that have like as complicated workflows as we do. Like Stack Overflow, basically they have two two workflows. You can upvote or downvote a question, or you can do one workflow, which is to close a question. Everything else is free form discussion on that. Yeah, we actually had Jeff Atwood come in when he was working in his state. He was about halfway through the past version of the Discourse software. We wanted to like see what he knew about these things and like you know let's pick his brain and. He, he spent like 10 minutes like looking at some of our workflows and he was like, you guys can't use anything that we're doing. I mean, he's yeah. like, our stuff okay, is way too Okay, but that is the rule. In information science, you've got a complicated workflow and that complicated workflow, if that doesn't work, you have to redesign the workflow. That's yes. Yeah. So you have to work with community. Well, on English Wikipedia, you have to work with the community. So okay, we've got to redesign the workflow and provide awesome software, which makes it much easier for you. That's the goal. I think in most with cases, the, the work, the workflow isn't actually that complicated. If you look at what people are actually doing. Actually doing. That was my point with the, the like, kind like, of abstraction. Like, article deletion is basically like a three-step process. Say, I would like to delete this article. Here's what. Discuss whether or not we should delete this article with other people. <coughs> close the discussion. So that's really only three steps. But as on English Wikipedia right now, First, you have to post a template on the article page to copy this, this other template to a listing page that is something like a bot should be doing. And a bot actually will do it, I think, if you forget. But that means you're the person who didn't do it right. And then you post, you create another page where the discussion happens. So, but most of that is just like grunt work, not the real workflow. Right, exactly that. I mean, the, the workflows are complicated because the software is not designed to support it in any way. Um, so this is basically, we're going to give the ability to do that. I, I think if a top page cannot work for a new editor that just got their edit reverted, that would be a little bit of a point of view. So that might be a validation that as whatever you're building, like you want to make sure that like, a blank, what does a blank user page look like? For, and then what does it look like when my edit got reverted, I got a notification, somebody left me a message. That, that, I think that's, yeah, that's that should be a critical value. Yeah, and 60% of the new user. Okay, I think, oh, Chris, one more. Um, yeah, just a quick question, I guess. Uh, how are you going to 
tie it slowly together with what's being worked on, or perhaps more specifically, uh, how will you handle automatic messaging? That's another form which didn't get picked Automatic up. messaging is in a kind of like delivered by a bot or uh, by no, like Twinkle newsletters. Of, uh, newsletters. For example, right now we've got what's introduced by Twinkle. Right. And, welcome message. and I think you kind of hinted at automatic messaging for welcoming. Uh, and what old Cassie is working on, it does some automatic messaging as well. They're all the same. Uh, from, okay, from, from our perspective, they're all the same. Um, it's all conversations that are initiated through the API. So it's not going to be any different than a bot, as far as as far as we're concerned. Well, I, I think that the one difference is so I think what what Brandon mentioned earlier is that a lot of these changes can happen gradually. So if right now the process for disseminating a newsletter is to spam 200 user top pages, well, guess what? You can still spam 200 user top pages if you'd like to do that. Like you're not going to lose that ability. But if you'd rather actually post that update to a single notice board that users subscribe to, they won't get the kind of update that gets posted right. there. That's the easier way to solve the same problem. The signpost is actually a really good example here for something that is, is currently done poorly, but we can do great. So poorly, the signpost creates a new page every time, and then a bot goes around to everybody who's subscribed to the signpost. It means they put their name on a wiki page someplace, and it leaves a message on the top page and says, here's this new version of the signpost. Well, what if we just actually have a page the signpost has a flow board, and then you just subscribe to the flow board. Now you don't have to, no bot does anything. It just, the new, new stuff just comes into your flow stream as, as, as it does. So we, we aren't removing the ability to spam all 200,000 people who are subscribed. Uh, we're just actually providing an alternative that says we don't have to do that anymore. There is a transition issue you need to think about yes. there, which is that. Uh, if these bots are built on doing basically which is a very simple HTTP post, and if, if they can no longer do that to the top page, they'll break. So then either they need to do some fancy workflow thing, or they need to use the Flow API, unless you provide like some kind of backwards compatibility mm -hmm. You have to do the latter. You have to provide some backwards compatibility yeah. changes you post them. Yeah, yeah, we're but the idea is to kill all bots. We um, want to have yeah. humans to interact with each other, <laughs> and especially new users yeah. don't want to have one don't want to have see any message from any bot. No. You're gonna kill the, the one because you're gonna have a small rebellion in your hands if you feel a clue bot. Well, well I, think, the, I think that there. I mean, the, what can the you one way to scare new users is by. Uh, there's there's several bots that will die, but there's still gonna be bots that stick around. Yeah. Yeah. I think the newsletter delivery thing is a bot. So that's just one. Edward, Edward's bot. Yeah. yeah. The but bots that help the community. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, let's let's be very honest about that. Like a huge percentage of bots exist to specifically to do the grunt work uh, involved in workflows that we would just do, and then the bot no longer has a purpose. It becomes, you know, really depressed. Here I am, bring the side of the plane. <laughs> okay, I think we're I think we're done. Can I have one, one, oh, okay. one uh, So I have the right to speak for a notification, not only for a wiki page, but also for the blog. And then um, actually also interested in having some just some discussions already happening on the blog, right? And uh, trying to enable uh, people to just con just con sorry, to comment on their Wikimedia and uh, so ready to open up. And that's kind of open this uh, question how we integrate these discussions with anything that's happening on the wikis. I don't see what we And have subscriptions, right? So, Ryan Lane wants to control me. No, I just want to make a Okay. As, as a, a third-party user of the Wiki, I just want to thank you for like doing this, because this system in general, and like I, I used to with threads before, but like this system in particular is something that me and the users have wanted like forever. Yeah. And having this is just an awesome thing in general, and I just wanted to thank you.